I'm Laura Clark. I'm the British High Commissioner to New Zealand and Samoa and the Governor of Pitcairn Island. Pitcairn is one of the most remote and smallest communities in the world. Sitting in the Pacific Ocean, halfway between New Zealand and Chile, it is 36 hours by boat from its nearest island neighbour. It is the UK's smallest overseas territory and has 51 inhabitants. In May 2018, I made my first journey to Pitcairn. My husband took a camera. This is our film. Pitcairn is a place of legend, forever linked with the mutiny on the bounty. After overthrowing their captain, the mutineers sailed on to find an island where they would never be found. And that was Pitcairn. I live with my family in Wellington, New Zealand. The journey to Pitcairn is one of the great journeys of old. There is no fast route, no shortcut. A flight from Wellington to Auckland, another to Tahiti, a further flight to Mangareva at the eastern edge of French Polynesia. We're leaving Mangareva on the Claymore 2, uh, and this is the beginning of a 30-hour journey. So we have all night tonight, all day tomorrow, and then actually the next night, and then we actually get to Pitcairn. So this is the final stage of the journey. Uh, but a lot of the tourists that we take out are um, uh, people that have read the book *Mutiny on the Bounty* um, when they've been, uh, you know, when they've been kids and just had the idea that they wanted to, you know, go out and, and see where it all happened. So we're on the Claymore and it's a bit rocky. I'm just looking at the maps of where we've, what our journey has been so far. And we flew from New Zealand, which is way off the map, the way through to Tahiti, Papiti, and stayed there waiting for our connection. And then we flew from there to Hau, which is a military base and airline stop. And then from there to Gambia Island, then we got a ferry across to Mangareva and then we met up with the Claymore, which is what we're on now and we're currently waking our way to Pitcairn there and we're probably about a third of the way through. As the new governor, I'm going to Pitcairn to meet its people, learn about the opportunities and challenges facing the island and to talk about the future. So here we are in Pitcairn. We're well, not on Pitcairn yet, just approaching it. And it's amazing to see it for the first time and to imagine sailing out to it and thinking, yeah, that looks, that looks like home. And we're waiting now to be picked up by some of the pit canners on longboats because this boat can't dock here. Apparently they just push you onto the longboat. You're not allowed to jump for yourself. So you've got to get the timing exactly right. Landing on pit can is a revelation. What looks inhospitable from the sea becomes lush and fertile. Houses nestle amongst abundant fruit trees. The seas, which form one of the world's largest marine protection areas, are teeming with life. The land is full of exotic and endemic trees, and the skies host Pitcairn's wonderful birds. Laura, welcome to Pitcairn Island. Uh, Thank my you. My name is Sean Christian. I'm the eighth generation of Fletcher Christian, Edward Young, and my Mitty from, from the Bounty. And... Uh, Yes, I have an extended family on Pitcairn, um, close to 22, 28 members wow. Um, wow. on Pitcairn Island today. The vision and, and, and our objective uh, is to have Pit, keep Pitcairn yeah. um, populated yeah. and have a you know thriving and, if possible, um, sustainable or semi-sustainable community on yeah. Pitcairn. There's a number of opportunities that exist um, on Pitcairn today, yeah. like the honey industry, yes. coffee um, starting to evolve, and, and a number of other um, industries that possible industries yeah. that haven't been tapped into yet. Yeah. Uh, whereas in the past, the, the primary economy or revenue for Pitcairn mm. was through um, the, the Federal sort of Bureau. The the stamps. Mm. And mm. while it still exists today, it's not enough to, to cover the running expense yeah. of Pitcairn. Yeah. Um, so the, the hope is within 10 years time to have Pitcairn either semi-sustainable or yeah. fully sustainable ag again and mm. to, to be less reliant mm. on UK aid. On financial aid, yeah. yeah. Pitcairn has one school, 
and one teacher. It currently has three students, aged 8, 9 and 11. Pitken children are taught the New Zealand curriculum and tend to go to New Zealand for secondary school. I love that you come to Kulau School. It was great to see you. Do you have a dog and a cat? Oh, that's a topic of debate. Some people want a cat. Some people think they can't look after one. Um, I have a cat called Doofus. He's called Doofus because he can run into a wall. He's very nice and he's beautiful. My dad has coffee and bees. Wonderful. We want to go see the bees. Pitcairn has one of the most disease-free bee populations in the world and the honey produced on Pitcairn is of an exceptionally high quality. Hello, I'm Mike Lupton Christian. Um, I'm an apiarist and this is my apiary. There's 19 hives. Um, small but efficient. <laughs> and tell me, what, what makes Pitcairn honey so good? Um, well, starts from with the flavour, it's, it's a tropical honey, um, it's, it's a cocktail of all the different fruits and um, sh sugars on the island. It's, it's quite a strong mango of flavour to it and that's what first attracts people. And then the other one, is, the, other, the other angle is, um, it's, we're one of the few places, if not the only place in the world that's completely bee disease free. I wouldn't say people actually make a living out of it, but, but it's just, um, after sort of um, government jobs and um, paid jobs, it's the next best source of income. Right. Yeah. And most families are involved in the industry. Yeah. So, yeah. How long have you been the postmaster, Dennis? About 30 years, probably. Really? Um, 1985, 87, around that time. Yeah. But not, not all the time. I've okay. been off island, you know. Okay, so you've done it on and off. On yeah. The stamp and postcard revenue used to be big, didn't it? Well, in those days, you know, we didn't actually depend it on budgetary aid. You know, we were selling enough yeah. stamps to take to care support of it. yourselves. But now, you know, like, I've been here that long, but I'm yeah. not interested in collecting stamps. Yeah. And yeah. I guess, you know, that's the whole world over. Younger people are interested in something yeah, else. Other things. Yeah. yeah, so you don't get the same um, stamp collect people with, who are desperate to get those pit can stamps and come here. And, Probably you know. if we have a regular mail service, yeah. we might get a few more, but some of them get a bit discouraged when they know they have to wait through months. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because when I post my postcard today, I mean, will it go back? I suppose it will go on the claim. It'll go on claim next week. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I mean, you're really lucky, so but you're, yeah. say someone come in next uh, when the claim was gone, yeah. it'll be here for it'll three, be three months. months until, <laughs> until the next boat rotation. Yeah. yeah. Actually, how about change? I was waiting for the doctor, he's here. He's still alive. Thank you for your ministry on the island now. We appreciate it so much. But why is it that people know? that there are some things are wrong yeah. to do, but they're still doing it. How about adultery and other stuff? The list is long. How about fighting and quarreling, domestic violence? And um, Wayne, I don't know if you want to talk a bit about your, your coffee production. Oh, yeah. Uh, first okay. Or... Uh, actually, you know, uh, we just started this year, really. Uh, mainly last year. Yeah. We did uh, did some. Uh, we planned some about four years ago, but we didn't follow up. Right. And after all the news came out again, mm. said we need your coffee. Mm. Mm. And then I went back and look after the uh, the old coffee, and we plant some more. We're gonna bring something. Yeah. In uh, it's 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 for the people to look into it. Yeah. The future to. You know, you have, you know, you can put yourself into it. Yeah. Make money out of it. Yeah. You know, that's it. You know. We did the Hill of Difficulty, and then Jim's Ground Road, and we've just gone past Stinking Apple, I think. I didn't smell it. No. <laughs> and then we're heading down St. Paul's to St. Paul's Pool, where we're going to have a swim. And this is where you went yesterday, down rope. Down rope. <laughs> down rope. 
which yeah. is apparently less bad than down the god. Yeah, but it, it def definitely doesn't have a rope. It needs no. to have a rope. And where Dick Fall, we're not going to go to where Dick Fall. There's lots of places called, here we are, Johnny Fall. <laughs> it's amazing. McCoy's Drop, that's where McCoy must have fallen off and died. A whole load of places where people met their end, I think. Oh, well, Down Duggy Fall. <laughs> Let's hope we don't. We don't want to have where governor fall. <laughs> where governor fall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think this must be must be some of the best snorkeling in the world. It's so clear down there. It goes so deep, and I suppose that's because it's just volcanic rock and coral. Uh, wind's picking up a bit now. Oh no, there's a flying fish. Jumping fish. It's just amazing, it really is, and so secluded. Hi Carol, how are you? Hi. Lovely to see you. It's oh, good to have you here too. It's great to be here, and I'm looking forward to looking around the museum. Oh, by all means, so, come you. on, come on in. We have the Bounty Bible, and it was used by um, John Adams to, to teach the, the children after all the mutineers were gone, but the, the amazing thing about it is that he couldn't read or write, wow. and it was Edward Young, that actually taught him how to read, which was a good thing. Otherwise, you know, you would have been another dumb thing to Yeah, as the administrator, I am Her Majesty's government representative on Pitcairn, and I also work very closely with the uh, with the local government. I'm head of the public service here, and I also sit on council and work with them through decisions that need to need to be made. Right, great. I mean, it's, and it's and it seems to be working really well on, on that basis. One of the things that lots of people have been raising, because the community is now quite small, I think mm. it's about 50 in total, so including contracted staff, lots of people are talking about the future and what mm. the future holds. Because I think back in 1936, it was something like 200 people and the population is getting smaller and smaller. What do you think the future holds for Pitcairn? I think it's... Something we actually don't know at the moment, and we're in the middle of a piece of work right now to work with the islanders and with with the British government to determine what the future is going to hold for the Pitcairns. Um, we hope that it will be a positive future because, as you said, it's a beautiful place. It's a lovely island. Mm. The people are something special. Mm. And um, but working out the options uh, is a big step to take, yeah. and we're working together on it very closely with with the islanders. As I leave Pitcairn Island, I am proud to be its governor. With a declining and ageing population, the island faces many challenges, but its people are warm, resilient and creative, and the island is more beautiful than I ever imagined. I hope that together, the British government and the people of Pitcairn can secure its long-term future. The world would be diminished without it.